Today's video is going to be a little bit unusual because I'm not doing a whole lot of work on anything. I have had a lot of people ask me where I get some of the stuff I do. Today I'm going to show you my source for big and weird stuff. If you like to see old junk, you might find this interesting. This is my 1970 International 4x4 pickup. I've done two videos on this so far. In the first one I got it running. And in the second one I got it on the road. And when I got it on the road I found out the clutch is totally fried. Finally I got my lift free in the shop so I can bring this in and take a look at what's wrong. Last night, the previous owner called me up and told me he wants the truck back as is. He wants to trade for stuff. But this is a friend of mine that's gotten me a lot of good deals, including the mutt truck, the tow tug, the half tracks, the forklift. He's always got interesting stuff in his yard. So I'm going to take a once over on this, see where we're at, bring him over so he can look under it, and then we'll figure out what we can trade for it. And that might be fun. Last time I drove this, there's a few things I noticed that I wanted to look at, figure out what they are, so I know what the status of this truck really is. Got a few loose wires hanging down. This one's laying on the exhaust, so that's good. Now, one good thing about doing videos like this is a lot of times I'll put a camera under a vehicle to see what the drivetrain looks like when I'm driving. I see things that I wouldn't normally see, like this transfer case. Something looks funny about it. And a couple people mentioned they thought they saw it move, so I want to see what's happening with that. This slip yoke it's supposed to have some travel in it. That's compressed all the way. It almost looks like this transfer case is twisted slightly. So I want to see what's happening there. It's not mounted from the bottom. It's mounted entirely from the top, which means this thing's just sort of hanging there off that cross member with a little bit of bracing on one side. I got a pry bar. I'm going to wiggle this thing. You guys keep an eye and see if it looks like it moves. Oh yeah, that's... That's almost floppy. It's a full floating transfer case. It doesn't stay in the same spot. It just moves around as needed. And that moves that slip yoke too. So yeah, this thing just flops around. Now, why does it flop around? I think I found the problem. We got the transfer case here. It's solidly mounted to this cross member. And then this cross member hooks to the frame with what looks like it used to be a rubber bushing. And that's where it's moving. That looks like an easy fix. But if someone has a transmission out already, that'll be the time to fix it. So I'm gonna ignore that for now. At least I know what the problem is. Now the other thing is that front wheel didn't have any brakes at all. I couldn't bleed it, I couldn't use it. And this is the one the drum was way off balance. It appears there's a giant gap here. I don't see any brake shoes in there. That might be an issue. Yeah, there's no brake shoes in there. That doesn't quite look right. Wonder if a shoe came loose and got caught in there, twisted around and bent up this backing plate and they just gutted it and blocked off the line as a quick and easy fix. Figure this wire can't be doing too much useful since it's not connected. So I'm just gonna snip it off and get it out of the way. Apparently I didn't even need to cut that wire. It's not connected on this end either. But while I'm here, I noticed something else interesting. There is a lever which goes to a crank, which goes to pins. One on this side, and one on this side. You pull the handle and it pulls out those pins and releases whatever was attached there. Maybe a sprayer or some kind of equipment. I don't know. I showed him everything that was wrong with that truck and he wants it anyway. So on the trailer it goes.
Well, that went poorly, but it's on. Trailer brakes work. I think we're all set. Head out to bring this truck up there. Now, this is different than one of our usual deals. I don't know what I'm actually trading this truck for. So I'm gonna go shopping in his yard to see if I can find something cool. So I'm gonna bring you along and see if we find anything interesting. You got the shopping cart, so I could go shopping here and just fill one up. Yep. Well, International 4300 with a almost nice cab, except for a little bit of roof issues. It's a nice truck, looks quite salvageable, except uh, it's missing a little bit in the rear. Other than that, it looks real nice. And it's a bit widened because they had two sets of forks to haul, two pallets of blocks. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had the extension on the I side there. Widen this out to the tires. Just for a wide rack two fork. That is a four wheel drive. It's a field forklift. Huh. No, technically, it's about uh, five wheel drive. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. It's got a regular closed knuckle, knuckle axle. That's a nice little tow. Is that for towing it around? Yeah. For like a. You put it neutral. Like don't. flat tow it? Yeah. Huh. It leaks on the back, but see, see, it's like a specific pump on this one. <laughs> no hydraulics on it whatsoever. No, this cool. handle here is two is three functions. It makes you go forward and back. Yeah. Rotate the circle. And you pull this dog here out. Uh-huh. Up against that gear, and that raises your boom. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was raining with your wheels. <laughs> um, is the starter really, stick I, on it? or I, I hear a, a noise and something. Once in a while, a starter hangs. Center of that machine. That's what drives everything, huh? Yeah, I need to work on the adjusters a little bit, and if they're if they're tight, or if I got to cut them out there and build a new new thread. No, it's a simple thing. It's not like I got to buy a bunch of parts. You got to build it to you. I like that. I put them back in there. It's for rotating the house and everything. And when that one model in my book is too. Good day. And I need to change oil in it too. That, that's, yeah, that's pretty bad. You think that's got water? Yeah. That's what the sort of whitish milky color does. Yeah. Yep. I hope it's not cracking, right? This is an 880. This is unique because I've never seen another one. But it's an 880. Okay. And nobody even knows they made an 880. Me and Jack. I never know. heard of one of those. He had never heard till he got it, and I never, you know, I'm into trucks. Yeah, yeah. 880, and it had the chrome grill. But they've had 600 had chrome grills. That is a cool old truck. That is. It's just not, the problem is it's the most beat up truck I got. <laughs> and I got papers with it. And that one's not so bad. And the other one's the older series. Huh. You know what the difference are? This is 73 to 79, right? Okay. This is 67 to 72. 73 to 79, got a ripple. Uh-huh. 67 to 72, got a ripple on the outside. Oh, okay, ripple. yep. Big excavator bucket, because... It's placeable teeth on it? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Oh yeah, they don't look, they don't look oval. They're round. Yeah. Yeah, these are 12 volts. But these are Ramsey's. These are very good. My dad put a brand new in 72, 73. Yeah. Still got them on his truck. Huh. I got several of those. I collected 
bought parts and pieces of building and I found some down in Texas. This is a PTO one, PTO. So 29,000 pounds is this, this little thing? That's an M35 monitor. Huh. And it's equivalent to, basically equivalent to the 10T Smeal. Okay. 10T Smeal though can be telescoped to pick up 27. You got them all categorized by size? I got 16s, 16 16.5s, 16 and 17.5s, two <laughs> rows of 1020s, 920, 1020 Dayton wheels, and one roll of 10 hole buds, but I got more. 24.5 rotators. And look at all my wheels. 24.5, 22 Dayton rings, 10 hole bud oh, wheels. This is just the big stuff. You got a rack over there with the yeah, that, smaller. That, but yeah. <laughs> I got different ones. These are 16s. 16, Billy, going. These are military 16,916 inch wheels, dolly axles. And I got 16.5. I thought I had more 16.5 loose than I did. I'm looking for stems and tools to match for four and a quarter by six. That's four by five. Anything cable tool bits I'm willing to trade on. I am looking, that's one thing holding me up doing anything. I ain't found the tools for my rig. Four and a quarter by six. Hey, that's the that's the drive unit from the lathe? Yeah. <laughs> that just uh looks like a four speed box or so. No, that's a five speed. Five speed? And there's a five speed that might work for that gearbox down there on that forklift. Now we got the spindle turning on it. It come froze up, but it's Yeah. Got a neat gearbox. I want to make the welding aid out of it. Those are okay. the best welders, the smoothest welders you'll ever weld with. Huh. They use I have never ones. seen one like that. Yeah, my dad's got one. That's a very proper one in that size. Okay. But I, I think you, you had can... to cut it out of a tree, huh? It was at the auction. That guy got it down there with a chainsaw and saw it and cut the damn tree out of it. <laughs> I don't know if they ever use it. They broke Ooh. the gear. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brass gear, that big gear there, was running, was right here. Run yep. off of this one, and this one run this one to turn this. Right, yeah. And I'm gonna make it out of steel instead of brass. Yeah. So whenever they get it in the bind, they really break it, it'll really break something. <laughs> and put me two stands to keep it straight, like that roll I give you. You can't, you gotta keep it straight because it'll wiggle it. Yeah, well, because this has the, the side rollers to keep it aligned, huh? Yeah. Okay. This one's a radial arm drill press, huh? Yes. Okay. And I traded it for a radio arm craftsman the other day. <laughs> I found a Walker Turner for 150, 250 bucks. I'm gonna get down Texas somewhere. Okay. Because I got the Walker Turners that you gave me. Yeah. Between... The horizontal and vertical mill, huh? Yeah. But you, you can adjust it this way and that way to put that at any angle you want, huh? Any angle you want in. Oh, the table angles too. This way. Huh. But you don't have a. No draw quill. Bar don't go down. Yeah. Gargoyle Veltra. Uh, Italian. Okay. All hydraulic. Okay, so yeah, it just has a crankshaft there that drives the giant hacksaw. And it hydraulically raises and hydraulically comes down. Huh. It's not like you, you can't lift that arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's thick. It's not, not solid, but it's, uh, Pretty hefty. And all my crane wants to do to move it. I've got all the parts found to put on the gas cassette, the fuel pump, everything. I because, well, here, where's that little plate? Well, the plate's over there in the truck. Oh, look. Maybe that's the flywheel I need. This is 530 steps off of. You got quite a little line of generators going. Yeah. This one is the one I just got, five. I had to rearrange it. Now that's a vertical shaft motor, because the gas tank's meant to have, to have the fuel yeah. cap up. See, well, look so at that. So it be this way. I just got the 271 in it, it's got one bad cylinder. Yep. Or, they just inject the wrong man put it in it with a hoop. This is 1944. This is early 50s. Yeah. It still runs on one cylinder. 
And it's still moving the boat itself. Just out of curiosity, when do one of these things go for? Reality, it's a $2,500 tractor. Huh. But that's the reality. That's not parts, it's, it's more or less complete with one missing parts and all. Yeah. I'll talk on 25 if the one's complete. It's pretty decent little tractor. It's that British, one of the British gases, but the one of the less made. <laughs> it's funny, it's missing the two important bits. A PVC. I got fast line stuff. Bulldog. Bunch of bulldog plugs. Serious pipe fitting. I traded for much more pipe to pipe handling tools and this is what I did. What's that? I used the two bottom ones, all of the two bottom ones. Now I got some pipe. Oh, oh yeah, more CJ5 stuff. Huh? They're round though. I only like the flat fenders. Yeah. It's a Pujo Jeep transmission. No one wants one. No. Nope. <laughs> you want to put, get rid of that one. That's a Marine left hand. Turn. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at it, had that why they have a is that the direction of rotation cast into it? Mm. -mm. No? It's left hand. That's right hand turn. Oh okay. Just a logo. That's deep to, that, that should be an in and in because of valve covers. The other one's straight 671. The last one's a 453 T. That's on the damn head track. Yeah. Then there's my set. You've seen that, haven't you? Yeah, I've seen this truck before. 14,000 miles. 14,000 miles on this? Yeah. See how easy the door opens? Oh, yeah. Now look at the seat. Now roll the window half down and half up. Oh, yeah. Now, ain't that cool? Huh. Yeah, that is a nice shape. Yeah. It's got a 534 V8 gas. Yep. Five speed. I need drive shaft for it. Okay. Pump the oil with two rear cylinders on the left hand side, right? Oh, okay. Now, if only I could figure out some good use for it. Uh, <laughs> that'd take some top of it. Yeah, I know. 226, like what was in that 450. 345. That's a three cylinder Lister propane. Perkins four cylinder, it's all the thermal kings. That's a cute little diesel. This is a Leroy. Leroy made engines for all the summers a lot. This is that straight four. In line, Wisconsin. Okay, oh, so that's a Wisconsin in line. These it, are the V4 versions. These are rare, rare to find. And I had a guy; he really wanted it, yep. and he backed out. He offered me twice of what I was asking for. Oh yeah, straight out the top, huh? Where's the head? And so there's the head. So that would be the oil pan, sort of yeah. Minneapolis Moline motor, then. Yeah. Okay. And it's got a, it's got levers on it to run, run the valves on the side. So that's a four old four. That's another Minneapolis Moline, right? Three. Yeah. Now they made two others look just like it. You got room to put two cans in there. It's got enough stroke to do two cans at once. That's a mini gooseneck. <laughs> they start heavy, heavy, heavy. 12 inch channel, 12 inch, goes down to 10 inch, down to 8 inch, down to a real light back end off of a trailer. Heavy to light. I remember the smell of that truck. Yeah. I, gotta, I don't want to pull the head apart, but shit. So it ran off these three cylinders, and, and the back there. three was an air compressor? Yeah. Huh. It's got a Continental F-142 or something like that. Now this is the thing I got to see here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Weldmobile. Once you see this, you ain't going to see nothing. nothing <laughs> There's that cover. This is cool. 450 amp. So 450 amp welder. Somebody added an AC generator to it. Huh. Well, we think it's added because he will put on an alternator Delco. I think it's a tug because it's got the big ones, the big tires, and the 15s in the front. The first one had 15s all the way around it. That just it almost looks like the, the dashboard is your welder. It is. This is neat. I'm going to take this and you plug extension cord in it and extension cord there and it's a uh oh it's remote exactly huh and that's something cool to get with hobarts i just still can't get over they built the tractor out of a welder because it looks like that was welded after it was bent yeah. like that fender was bent then they welded that back on yeah, it probably used to end right here. That's what I'm thinking. Good look underneath. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been the rear of it. Steering box is locked up. Drove a lot of miles in one of these. <laughs> Am I getting the motor out of one of them? Well, there's one motor. And Fanny. This is the one that was all falling apart. Okay. Let's see if I can see the casting number on the side. 318 on this one. Oh yeah, that looks that looks a lot better. That's milk. Yeah, this one's more complete, so I might as well take this one because it looks like it hasn't been stripped for parts. Let's scout someone else's, right? That's John. Okay. It's a no-no. Yep, that's what I figured. I found him that scout. Jonathan? Oh, hey, did this used to be a closed cab? No. Nope. Not that we know of. Okay, yeah, I just I don't remember. I haven't really looked at too many of them. Hmm? Up there in the hatch? Yep. Where we got the sleeper? Yep. It's set up there for years. He drove it when he was a kid. Oh, okay. It's a 64. Oh, there's that welder I got out of, uh, what do you call it? Tulsa? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> huh. That sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the uh, viscosity meters, this one here wholesale is $4,000. Huh. Hand viscosity meters, stirs, heat, heat plates, mud balance, beakers. We got a bunch of regulators and stuff, empty boxes, different things. Pretty cool. Even a smoothie stuff. blender. Yeah. <laughs> you want it? Nope. How thick are these? Are they about you know, 60, 80 thou thick? Yeah, you got different ones, but they're all... Huh. Just chunks of blade, huh? Yeah. Nice steel. Yes, it is. Working on filling up my shopping cart here. I'm going to have a little bit of a pile. I think that one's a little too big, though. We'll find other good stuff. <laughs> Snag one of the generators. This is a neat unit. It's a Ramsey winch. It looks like the old style PTO drive ones. Now this is where the PTO drive would normally go in, but this is a gearbox going over to an electric motor. I got another winch that's a Ramsey, but narrower, and a spare motor. So I can mix and match the parts between the two and hopefully make one complete narrow winch. Got some other stuff for a future project. So I'm gonna have a lot more projects on the way. I had a lot of fun shopping for junk. Hope you guys saw some interesting stuff too. I've got quite a few parts for different projects and I got some more parts on the way that I don't even have yet. So that worked out great for me. Now, if you saw anything in that yard that you couldn't live without, I'm gonna leave the contact info in the description so you can get a hold of my buddy. Not everything's for sale, but it might be. You can always ask and see what happens. Next video, I'm going to be back to working on stuff, maybe combining two non-functional winches into one that works, or maybe something else. Not even sure yet. But no matter what it is, I'll be having fun. Hope you guys are having fun with your projects too, and we'll see you next time.